Today, our exclusive guest is Assistant Secretary of the State for European and Eurasian Affairs, Karen Donfred. Madame Donfred, many thanks for this opportunity. I'll go straight forward for the regional developments, particularly Karabakh problem. So recently, Prime Minister Pashinyan stated in Parliament that Armenia's international partners expect Yerevan to lower a little bit a bar when it comes to its demands on Karabakh status in order to achieve greater international consolidation around Armenia and Karabakh. Is United States among those partners? And if yes, could you please specify what does it mean to lower the bar? To what extent? And what can be expected from that consolidation? I don't want to interpret the words of your prime minister. I think it might be best to ask him what he meant by those comments. But what I see happening is dialogue between Armenia and Azerbaijan that I think hopefully will lead to a resolution of the situation in Nagorno-Karabakh. And having been now to the three countries, I've really felt a desire for peaceful settlement because what that will mean for the region is an unlocking of the potential that regional integration can bring about. And so what I would say about the U.S. role here is that we are very eager to be helpful. And that help can be bilateral, our relationship, our bilateral relationship with Armenia. I've had the pleasure of developing a relationship with your foreign minister. Originally, it was over the phone. We had several phone calls. Uh, more recently, he came to Washington leading the Armenian delegation that was part of a strategic dialogue. My boss, Secretary of State Tony Blinken, has had multiple calls with your prime minister. The U.S. is also a member of the Minsk Group co-chairs, which plays an important role on Nagorno-Karabakh, and we remain committed to that process. We also see the European Union playing an important role. So I feel that this is a moment of opportunity for the region, and we will do our best to be helpful to Armenia in achieving peace. Before coming to the region and while being in Baku, you've stated that there is a good chance for the peace between Armenia and Azerbaijan. But is it possible to achieve long-standing uh, peace when immediately after your visit, Azerbaijani president returns to war rhetoric, speaks about Zangezur corridor and keeps dozens of Armenians in jails up to now? Well, let me say on the issue of rhetoric, I think it is so important that all of us be thoughtful about the rhetoric that we use. And there is no question that words matter. And so we need to be thoughtful about the words that we use. I think actions matter as well, but if there is going to be forward progress toward reconciliation, between Azerbaijan and Armenia, there is no question that people need to be mindful about their words and follow through on their actions. You have mentioned uh, Minsk Group. So after Russia's unprovoked aggression against Ukraine, West cut its ties with Moscow, including in OSCE Minsk Group. But can the West, I mean US and France as co-chairs, for sake of peaceful settlement, restore this format and sit down at the same table with Moscow again? Well, first, I, I appreciate you bringing up Russia's war against Ukraine. As you know, we have been clear in saying this war is unprovoked, it's unjustified, and it is brutal. And the United States is very focused on trying to help end that war. As you know, we have been supporting Ukraine to defend itself. and. I hope very much that Vladimir Putin will decide to end that war because he is the one person who could decide today to stop. Now, you suggested that in that context, the United States had stopped the OSCE Minsk Group co-chair process. That is not accurate. The US has continued to say that we support the Minsk Group co-chair process. We continue to believe it is a very important format, particularly on Nagorno-Karabakh, and it is essential that we keep 
various formats in play to try to advance peace. And we will continue to do that going forward. Cooperating with Russia? Yes. Russia is a Minsk Group co-chair. So yes, France, the US and Russia would continue in that format. But there is one more obstacle. Aliyev says no, thank you. Well, Azerbaijan has not been supportive of the Minsk Group co-chair process. The United States is, and we are a participant in that process and will continue to do so. Had you had a chance to talk about this with President Aliyev? I had a wide-ranging conversation with President Aliyev that covered many subjects, and the OSCE Minsk Group co-chairs was a topic that came up. The last developments in Ukraine also have shown how united and strong can the West be in defending a country which is being attacked by a bellicose neighbor. Can Armenia expect such a strong and visible, maybe, military support from the West when it has to defend its territorial integrity? So, the war in Ukraine is consequential on many levels. In the first instance, it is tragic for Ukraine. And I am proud of the role the United States is playing. I'm proud of the support the United States is giving to Ukraine. But every day this war continues, innocent Ukrainians are dying. So it is a horrible situation that we are in today. The United States is, through its support of Ukraine, this isn't just about Ukraine, it's also about the underlying principles, which are respect for sovereignty, respect for territorial integrity, the right of each country to choose its own foreign and security policies. These are principles that the United States believes in and stands up for. And the kind of world we want to live in, we think these principles and values are essential. And that is why the United States believes this war is so consequential. And the goal here is to ensure that Russia never undertakes this sort of aggressive invasion of any other country. And that is what we are striving for. I also want to be clear that as important as this war is, as important as our support for Ukraine is, and we have given a lot of focus to this conflict in recent months, it does not mean that we are not paying attention to other issues and other parts of Europe. And I do hope that my visit here is a very clear example of that. Because, as I mentioned, I do think the situation in the South Caucasus is of critical importance. I do think there's opportunity here. First and foremost, it is for you, Armenians, to work with your neighbors to try to advance that reconciliation agenda. But I want to make clear that the United States is ready and engaged and wants to be helpful in that process. And let's talk a little bit about internal politics. Uh, recently, the Armenian opposition was criticizing the West for turning a blind eye, as they said, uh, to, to violations of rights here in Armenia. So what's your response to this concerns? So as I just mentioned in the case of Ukraine, I do think democratic rights, respect for these fundamental principles of how we engage in the international community are essential parts of the world that we live in. And when we engage with Armenia, and now 30 years, as we continue to deepen that relationship, it is a holistic agenda that we have with Armenia that stretches from how we can advance economic prosperity, security and defense issues, and also the democracy agenda. And here I would say that democracy is not an endpoint. It is a process. We as Americans work every day to try to strengthen our democracy. And this is a vital part of our dialogue with Armenia. And I mentioned earlier that your foreign minister recently led a delegation to Washington to participate in this strategic dialogue. And an aspect of that dialogue focused 
precisely on these issues around how can we strengthen our democracy, how can we strengthen our respect for fundamental rights. And part of that conversation was around particularly how can we strengthen accountability when it comes to police and law enforcement. So these are important issues on the agenda that we talk about routinely with our Armenian counterparts. And we are committed to helping Armenia make its democracy stronger and more resilient. And as you know, your prime minister participated in the summit for democracy that President Biden hosted last December. And what came out of that was each country that participated then has an action plan that each of us is working on over this coming year. So I do think there's a great opportunity for us to strengthen our cooperation on these issues as well. And my last question is, you've mentioned the strategic dialogue uh, meeting that was held in Washington with the Secretary of State and uh, Armenian Foreign Minister attending. And you have today uh, several meetings with Armenian officials stating that U.S. Uh, gives a huge importance to the cooperation with Armenia, to the deepening of cooperation with Armenia. So what can an ordinary citizen of Armenia expect from this cooperation, from this deepening of ties? So first, just let me say how nice it is to meet with people in person. <laughs> I think all of us have had the experience of living through a couple of years of COVID. And you know it's great to talk to people on the phone, and we've all gotten very adept at using Zoom, but there's nothing like sitting in the room with someone. And it was my first opportunity to meet your prime minister, and that was a privilege. And I was able to continue a conversation with your foreign minister that I've had now over months, which I very much appreciated. I got to meet with others in the Armenian government. And there were a range of issues we talked about, but I will say that we spent a significant amount of time talking about prospects for reconciliation in the region. And I think what I would say to your viewers is I believe deeply that each of us has agency in the world that we live in. And if there are things we believe in and things that we want, then we should collectively pursue those and individually pursue them. And I think that the agenda of reconciliation is one that involves every Armenian. And I am aware of the painful history that exists between Armenia and Azerbaijan. And I know how hard it can be to look ahead and imagine a different future. But I am certain that every one of your viewers wants a better future for the next generation of Armenians, for all Armenians. And so my commitment is that we in the United States want to help you achieve that. And I can commit to you that we will do so. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. You,